Welcome back with our breaking news nine's ongoing coverage of the Northern Territory election for 2020. If you're just joining us, let's have a look at our scorecard. Remembering the magical number to get to to form a majority government tonight is 13. As it stands right now, Labor has won seven seats, the country Liberal Party two, nothing at the moment for the Territory Alliance. Good evening once again, Charles Croucher, who joined us to bring us up to speed with all of the Thank latest God. details. Charles, I want to take a look at the seat of Araluan firstly. Now, this one, uh, particularly interesting because Robin Lambley for the Territory Alliance. Look, I think she might have headed in fairly confident. I don't think that will be the case right now. No, really interesting seat, this one. As you can see, that is the real three-corner contest there in play. Damien Ryan's a great candidate, the Mayor of Alice Springs. He's been around Central Australian politics for a long time. He's been around Territory politics for a long time. And he will hope that helps him when it comes to preference flow from Jason Ankers. He's a, uh, a Territory football coach down there. Uh, Bernard Hickey, the Green, it's interesting to see where his preferences go as well. Look, we're not used to seeing this many preferences in play, this few votes for the major parties. CLP would be hoping this is their seat. We'll be hoping it's a return back to, I guess, the faithful of the CLP in Central Australia. And Robin Lamley has a big job when it comes to representing Territory Alliance because it's looking pretty bad uh, across the board for Territory Alliance. So that's one that there's a lot of people holding their hat on. The other thing to say, if the CLP can't pick up that seat, they probably, and it's going to be difficult anyway, to govern in their own right. But certainly sure. they'd need that one as well. OK, let's take a look at Arnhem. We haven't had a look at that so far tonight. It is held by Labor and the candidate there, uh, Selena Yubo, hoping for another term. Yeah, and doing quite well at the moment. Uh, that's the, an area that takes in Jabiru, Grid Island, uh, as well as one of the RAF bases. Now, that RAF vote, I understand, is already in. It's part of that small 10% that's counted. These are primary figures. There's obviously a big vote for the uh, independent there as well. I would say this is better than Labor would have been predicting to go at this time. That's a really good result for them. We put that in one of the categories of the, the seats that Labor would be looking to now to try and make that 13, the magic number to mm. get to go. Government. Selena Yubo is a great candidate, has been part of the, the executive, been part of the minister, uh, ministerial benches, and she's performing really well there. Those numbers are still quite low, though, so we will yeah. keep an eye on it. Let's take a look at the seat of Barclay. Uh, the retirement of Jerry McCarthy really did uh, open up this one. Yeah, one again, you put in that category of the ones the CLP simply have to win and they are doing that at the moment. Uh, about one in five votes counted, still a low number, but that's a big result for Steve Edgington. He has a, a pretty solid lead there. It is a safe Labor seat heading in, as you mentioned uh, with Jerry McCarthy. That's going to be one of those seats that perhaps the independents play a big role. Look, that result is where the CLP would like to be. That's one they will have on their board in their column and one they need as well. Labor Party might be slightly nervous out in the Palmerston seat of Brennan. Tony Seavers holds that seat at the moment. Uh, these numbers are interesting though, aren't they? Yeah, it's a fascinating seat, this one. Mary Claire Boothby uh, stood at the last election and has campaigned, we're told, by the CLP every day since then. Again, one of those ones they simply must win if they were any chance of forming government. Tony Seavers is still in it. Interesting, that fourth independent you see there, Pete Chandler, of course, he was a former treasurer, a part of the government, part of the CLP. Whether his preferences, and he can pick up some momentum later on, I think Mary Claire Boothby would probably be liking where she's at, but that's so close and still uh, four out of five votes to come in. OK, Charles, thank you. Stay with us because I want you to join me at the moment because we're very lucky to have uh, Terry Mills with us, of course, the Territory Alliance leader. Terry, thank you very much for your time. We'll talk about the party in just a moment, but first I want to speak about your own seat in Blaine. As it stands at the moment, look, you are trailing by uh, Mark Turner by 400 votes, Matthew Curl at about 260. Is it over for you in Blaine? Uh, well, I can see the numbers and it, it doesn't look uh, particularly positive, uh, but it's, uh, it's a fluid situation and, I, and I'll, I'll just watch it play all the way out. But at the end of the day, I've always been of the disposition that uh, when people decide uh, who they want to represent them, I'm, that's most important to me and I'd be completely satisfied with their decision and accept that without reserve. But it has been a true honour uh, up until this point, to serve 20 years serving that community. Uh, Palmerston's grown during that time and the boundaries have changed uh, significantly. Uh, but that's my home, it's my community and, uh, and I've really uh, been a great honour to represent uh, the people of Palmerston and Blaine. Yeah, that sounds like a concession, Terry. Is that what it is? That what it is? I said it's still fluid. I mean, I, I'm, I think we just need to let those numbers uh, play all the way out because, uh, 
you know, the preferences uh, and uh, flows may be uh, what we don't expect, but we'll see. But, uh, you know, it's not time to make that call just now. I know you mentored as well, Matthew Curl, uh, in your time with the uh, Country Liberal Party, uh, before your time with Territory Alliance. Do you think he's, he has the numbers to get, get across once your preferences start flowing through? Uh, look, I, to be honest with you, I haven't been focusing on the numbers uh, and uh, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll let those numbers speak at the end of the day. Uh, but uh, I'm pleased to have been able to serve uh, for this period of time. Uh, maybe uh, the numbers may flow in a way that provides me with a, uh, another, another term. But if not, uh, I am honoured that I've been given this opportunity up until this point. Terry, the numbers aren't flattering as well for Robin Lambley and also Jeff Collins. What's gone wrong for Territory Alliance tonight? Well, you know, it's a, a party that didn't exist 12 months ago and it was born out of a, uh, a, a desire in the community for a, an alternative to both CLP and Labor. And we started, uh, coming ready or not, with the Johnson by-election uh, and if you recall, in the Johnson by-election, we nearly won that seat from Labor. But what changed between then and now is uh, the COVID pandemic really has changed everything. Uh, for a new party, a fledgling party, it was uh, very difficult for us uh, to campaign, as it was for anybody else, but we didn't have that critical mass as the others had. So that made it difficult. Um, but. Uh, we now arrive at this situation and we find that, uh, you know, as annoying as it was, that Labor was focusing almost exclusively on COVID. Uh, and they'd obviously read the play. They thought that that was going to advantage them politically. And I think it, it has worked for them. Uh, but when it comes to the Territory Alliance project, um, I believe that something has been birthed in territory politics and it's not really about Terry Mills. It's about a response to a, an improvement in the way that uh, politics does work. And if there are seats in Parliament, the Territory Alliance seats, and there may be two or three, uh, it's the beginning of something that's either in its own right could build something new, or it could bear a positive influence uh, on the other parties and improve the way they engage their local communities. Terry, it's Charles Croucher here. Firstly, nice to speak to you again and thank you for, for being part of this tonight. If there is those two or three seats and you don't hold any of them, don't hold blame, what role will yours be in the party? Oh, well, I'm just one member of it and, uh, you know, I, I didn't create this all by myself. There was a whole group of people that were uh, supportive of a new and fresh approach to territory politics um, and, you know, that's a conversation that we will all have together, uh, but that's not for tonight. You obviously have held the highest office in the NT. You know the benefit of stability. With that in mind, who should govern the Northern Territory after tonight? Oh, look, uh, that's a big call for, for me to respond to that at the moment. Uh, I've actually, in my time in Parliament, uh, I've found that the most uh, useful arrangements have been when it's really quite tight. Uh, and it really forces people to really engage and really think through issues rather than just use the weight of numbers and develop a lazy approach. And I think a tight parliament is going to be beneficial. And I think in a tight parliament, Territory Alliance could play a positive role. Terry Mills, we do appreciate your time tonight. I realise, uh, as you mentioned, the numbers aren't great for you at the moment. We respect you. Uh, you've done a, right. done a wonderful job for Northern Territory politics uh, over many, many years now, and we do appreciate your time with us here on Channel 9 tonight. Thank you. It would be very difficult to have a chat, wouldn't it? But anyway, let's move on. Charles, I want to bring in the numbers for Dryles, Drysdale now. Uh, this seat held by Eva Lawler. Yeah, it is. This is one of those ones in Palmerston. Eva Lawler will most likely make history tonight. Only 33% of the vote counted. That's a really good number for her, given where those independents sit. They will likely flow preferences through to her. And it looks like Eva Lawler will become the first Labor member to ever retain a seat in Palmerston. A big win for Labor as they try and scrap together those votes to get to 13 eventually. OK, Charles, I want to take a look at the seat of Gwadja. Now, this is uh, down in central Australia. Big redistribution of the boundaries, and Chancey Pake decided to move from an electorate where he's fairly comfortable to contest this one. 
and you can see why. <laughs> Yeah, took a risk and it paid off, and it paid off for Labor as well. That's one of the ones we have in the Labor column already. 29% of the vote counted. That is a huge primary margin for Chancey Page. He will return to his government benches, as he had, if they can hold government, that is Labor, but certainly a good result. And another one of those seats Labor would have had pencilled in, not in pen, a really big win for them. Those seats outside of Darwin, outside of the northern suburbs, any pick-up is a big pick-up for Labor, given the state of the, the territory. Well, here's one that's outside of Darwin the seat of Catherine and this is extremely tight. Yeah, it's a fascinating seat. We know Catherine has strong CLP basises, but there you can see mm. Melanie Usher, who was in the CLP, had worked for the CLP, lost the pre-selection and then decided to stand for Territory Alliance. When the dust settles and the way those preferences will flow, Clinton Booth, with just 4.8%, will put someone over the line. You know, I think there's 100 votes there between the top three candidates. That's one that will count for a long time. Melanie Usher may find herself as the only member of Territory Alliance in the Parliament at the end of the night. You know, Robin Lamley will have something to say about that uh, with her seat. But a really close result there uh, and one that will play out. I think we probably won't get a result there tonight. No, I'd agree. And uh, one of the Northern Territory bookmakers uh, had uh, someone punted from $6.50 into $1.25. Joe Hersey's, they'd be nervous, Charles, I think, tonight. Really <laughs> nervous with their money on the line there. OK, let's go uh, to Kathleen Gazzola now. Kathleen's at Labor HQ and has some breaking news. Kathleen, what are you hearing? Yes, Jono, well, some big cheers have just gone up at the camp here. I am getting text messages through that Labor is confident and optimistic of forming government. As Charles mentioned, they're confident in Drysdale, Eva Lawler making history there as their first Labor to hold the seat in Palmerston. And they're also confident in Daly that that's coming back towards their candidate. So very jubilant scenes coming through here. The beat has, the, the uh, atmosphere has really picked up here. They're waiting for Nara we are kit to walk through the, the member for Karama retaining her seat as well. So things are really starting to get amped up here at uh, Waratahs. There you go, Labor optimistic of holding a government. The, the breaking news coming to us live, Kathleen Gazzola. Thank you very much. And of course, we will be back as all the night develops. Uh, the numbers keep on flowing. You won't miss a thing. We'll be back with more in just a moment.